I only have so many breaths until I'm finished. And they chose to spend one or two or multiple of those breaths or multiple minutes of those breaths hating on someone else. That is someone who doesn't understand their value. And so literally when I see that, I go, oh man, I wonder what happened to them. Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh. Hello. Your wolf it's was, good to see you. Your wolf was a little deranged this morning. He's a little messed up in the head. It's okay. This is episode 108. And we shall call this the hateful. The hateful eight. The, the hateful 108. 108. 108, of full hate. of hate. Full of hate. 108, and we're full of hate. So, not us. Man, there's this conversation that always comes up. Anytime you're talking with, with a group of people, especially a group of people that are doing anything online and social media, doing anything of significance or not, about having haters. And yeah. it's almost like this badge of honor Bad they're honor. like yo bro like you know i got i got haters man and do they do they <laughs> do they really have do haters have haters or does their mom just disagree what they had to say in that video <laughs> right <laughs> so right, that's so what we want to talk about <laughs> i want to preface what we're going to talk about with a couple things so anytime you step out of the comfortable into the uncomfortable, into discomfort to do something greater than you've always done, okay? Those closest to you will be the ones to throw the stone. We call that crabs in a bucket, okay? Mm. So I'm gonna play devil's advocate before we go into this. So if you put one crab in a bucket, Tyler, that, that little joker will get out of that bucket. Mm. But all you gotta do is throw five in there and none of them will get out. Because as soon as one gets up a little bit, the other ones will pull them back down, okay? That is not what we're talking about today because that happens, right? I, I, I went through it myself. I went through it where the people closest to me, family, didn't agree, didn't like, didn't. Because here's the thing, my success and your success, and, and when I say success, I'm not just talking about money or in business. I'm talking about the change in your life, right? actually shines a light by default on the people around you on their dysfunction and so and so it's like crabs in a bucket sometimes you just forgive them love them and and, and keep moving forward and uh but what we're talking about today is we see it a lot we see people that are like oh man i got haters haters everywhere haters this haters that and i i want to just look at them and be like i don't what the what the hell you think maybe you have haters because maybe you're just the hateful maybe you're hateful and and maybe you maybe you hit things with hate and that's why haters show up i mean i don't know what do you think tyler well i think that so many people focus their attention on the negative and so you could you could you know post a video on on social media and have 38 awesome comments you know generally good feedback and there's three comments that are just you know a little negative but people choose to focus on the negative because that's what they want to change that's what they want to um that's what they want to uh implement and overcome and they look at those and they focus all their attention on the negative feedback and then they they focus their attention on who that negative feedback is coming from and then all of a sudden they make this decision that oh those people are just hating on me because I'm special. They're just hating on me because I'm doing something big in my life. But the reality is those people may just have constructive criticism. They, right. they, they, they may just have a different viewpoint right. than you. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like that, that should, that, that should be the case. Um, and so I think when you look at the, the situation as a whole, I think, People that are people are always going to disagree. 
Yeah. There's always going to be disagreements. God, that's what makes agreement so much fun. Like when you can get in agreement mm-hmm. with somebody, sure. it feels so good when you and I agree yeah. because we've had such violent disagreements. Yeah. You understand? Like it's sure. a great, it's a great, we disagree on stuff mm-hmm. and we will go toe to toe on certain things. And I mean, he's been wrong before, so it'll happen again. Yeah. But, uh, but, but. <laughs> Vice versa. <laughs> I was waiting, dude. I teed, I teed that up for you, dude. I was like, is he going to miss the teed up ball? Um, I don't want to be a hater. I don't want to be a hater. <laughs> well, you just hateful. <laughs> so I forgot what I was saying, but it was probably good, and he'll probably write it down and do a podcast on it later. <laughs> <laughs> a podcast within a podcast. A podcast within a podcast. He'll do some more of that loaf winning or whatever it's called. <laughs> The Breadwinner Podcast on iTunes, it's Spotify, the Breadwinner YouTube. Podcast on iTunes. Set, download it. Send anywhere, it to your friends. Where, anywhere where podcasts are available. There's only one guest I can think he's never had on there. Have I been on there? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it was super memorable. There's only one guest that he's never had on there twice. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. So, so what would you tell someone that is le- like legitimately, they're like, man, like uh, I got a lot of people hating on. I would actually, here's the thing. I, I I look at anything that somebody says as, okay, is that coming out of a place of pain in their life? Or is there, do I need to look at their perspective, right? Mm-hmm. And go, well, that's a unique perspective. Let me, let me, let me take a look at that. Maybe I engage and say, you know, some people that have said certain things about what I've said on here, mm-hmm. Actually, one girl, um, I remember this. This was, this was really unique. One girl a, a, attacked me with something I said, and they said, but that, that's because you're, a, you're white, you're male, you're a CEO, and you're wealthy. You have no idea what this side mm-hmm. of society, because she said something that was really harsh, and I engaged her. I was like, why would you say that? Mm-hmm. And then she told me that I'm, I'm white, which is true, I am. Um, a male, very true, uh, a stellar, staunch history of heterosexuality. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to face. I didn't have to face the hate in society from being from being a homosexual. Whether you like that or not, they have faced a lot of issues, mm-hmm. right? Um, and being born male, males have been in charge for. It's been a couple thousand good year run, mm-hmm. and so it's been a very. When I had little girls, I became a feminist mm-hmm. for sure because I saw the problem so much clearer. But I was born male, white, in America. And and I didn't have to face some of those problems. But when she talked about the, the, the other side of the tracks, mm-hmm. it was easy for me to tell her where I was from, sure. right? It was easy for me to tell her the poverty, yeah. the abuse, the, 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 and I won't go into all the stuff here, but the different things mm-hmm. that I've had to overcome. Everybody has their struggles, and and so when I engaged her there, but it, but you know what it did for me? She came back and she said, "You know, I'm sorry about that comment. I didn't know." And I went, "You know, I'm sorry about how I went right back at you pretty hard." Mm-hmm. Um, and and I said, "I can see where you're coming from." Yep. And these are my beliefs now, and these are where I'm at. And 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 look, I'm I'm super thankful for for who I am and how I am. Um, but I can see where she was coming from there. So it made me a little more careful when I talk about certain things to preface it with, "Hey, I know what it's like on this side. This is where I came from. I know what it's like here," and 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 that kind of thing. So it's a different it's a different scenario. So you may be in a position where you can engage that. Yeah. But if it's just hate, then it's coming from pain in their life. Yeah, exactly. And and listen, I never engage that. I never engage that because it does no good. All you're going to do is poke in their pain and get them riled up. And what they need is they need somebody close to them to love on them, yeah. right? And they need some love to shed and shred that pain that they're that they're slamming other people with. Because think about um, that, really, like what what that really means for that person. That person took, whether it was a couple of minutes or maybe longer, depending on what type of media that they were consuming of yours, they watched it. Mm -hmm. They internalized it. They formed an opinion. Mm -hmm. And then they took the time 
to type that opinion out, probably deleted a couple sentences, typed it back out, edited it a little bit, typed it back out. And That's hit, not witty enough. I and, gotta do and, hit, and hit send. Yeah. I have, it, I, I feel sorry. Like I, yeah. I feel bad because that person is at a place in their life where things are so bad that they, that they need to go take whatever's going on in their life out on somebody else. Yeah. But the reality is with social media, you have to understand when you're putting out content, especially when you start putting it out at scale and you've got different forms of media going out all over the place, mm -hmm. people are seeing a one minute clip that may be the first thing that they've ever seen about you. They're judging your entire life. Your entire life. And you may have content out there that, that thoroughly explains your entire life. They haven't seen it. Yeah. They don't know your backstory. They don't know that you were from the other side of the tracks. They don't know your, the, the pain that you've gone through, the struggle that you've gone through, the work that you've put in. All they're seeing is a picture of you, you know, in front of a nice house. Right. And they think, oh, well, easy for you to say. Um, so to think that someone's going to have the time and energy to dive into your entire story. Right then make a decision is ridiculous. Yeah. Like that's, that's way too much to ask uh, for people. And Gary Vee talks about it all the time. He's like in a one minute clip, I can be the worst human on the, on earth, on earth because of the fact that especially you know, like us, like when we're, when we're very strong willed and we're very um, passionate about the things that we talk about, mm -hmm. it's easy for that to come off in a 30 second clip and rub people the wrong way. Uh, for sure. Especially when we talk about, Hey, everything's your fault. Everything's your fault. Embrace discomfort. You got to get uncomfortable. You got to go through the suck. You got to get, you know, you got to get, go through painful experiences. It's very easy for someone to take that. And if that's the only thing they've seen, they're like, screw you. Yeah. Screw like, you. Like, yeah, wow, yeah. You got to hard enough. Like, yeah, you yeah. got to go through pain sitting in your you know super nice office and got to came to work in your nice car. Like, yeah. like I get that. I have, I, I have empathy a hundred percent for that person. But I also know that if that person hangs around long enough, and mm. that's typically my response. Anytime someone says something negative, um, it's typically when I'm running ads on posts because yeah. it's going to completely new people that have never seen any of my <coughs> yeah, content. Me too. And they'll say I stuff slam me. and the, yeah, they'll, they'll say things like, Oh, just what I wanted to see in my feed. Another, you know, bearded, whatever, you know, talking about life. Yeah. And oh, what are bearded are, guru. Are, yeah, bearded guru selling, you know, peddling some something. And I typically the only response I really ever give is, man, I encourage you to stick around. And I think you'll you'll find that it's further from the could not be further from the truth. Right. Like stick around and consume a little bit more content. And I think you'll understand. And that's typically all, all, I'll, all I'll say. That's the only en engaging that I'll do because anything else is just a complete waste of time. Right. And here's the thing. The people that do engage with that right there, you got to understand that when you engage and go into that, that person did that out of a place of either self-judgment, self-loathing, self-criticism, self-hatred. And then, and then what they're doing is they're not changing them, so they put that out on you. When you go into that situation, you get offended, and you go into that, you're getting it on you, right? You're going to get a little on you. And, and that's never helpful, right? It's never helpful. And so what Tyler's talking about is, is beautiful, the way that he, he will say, hey, and I get it. I get it. Here's this. Stick around. See that this isn't true. Um, or or not it's okay either way it's but, it's not engaging hate with hate for sure and so at the end of the day if if you're one that is putting yourself out there you just have to be willing to accept the fact that if your intent is right like if your intent is good if you're putting out information if you're putting yourself out there on social media and your intent is true good right whatever description you want to give it I believe 99.9% .9 of people are. Then, then then that's it. Like that's like end of sentence. Yeah. Like that's it. Like if you know your intent is good, then all that stuff doesn't matter. Yep. Like it does not matter and it should not affect you enough to talk about it. Right. Like th it should never come up in conversation as and some people it comes up in conversation as like a kind of like a prideful like boasting like yeah. hey man like i got haters like you know what is that like when your haters ask if you're hiring like that kind of it's like there's no there there's there's no nobility 
in like stacking up your haters and showing them off. Right. <laughs> like like, like it's, it's ridiculous. So, I want to be able to stack up my lovers, the people that love me, and show them <laughs> off. I mean, not lovers. Lo- yeah, that sounded wrong. The people that stack, that admire stack or up. like me. <laughs> Just stack yeah. them up. I really don't want to stack up lovers. <laughs> That's a weird. That came out completely wrong. Uh, um, very wrong. So, but anyway, the, the I wanted to say something about that, Tyler, because I'm sitting here thinking, and it went right out of my head when I made the. Lovers well, it's kind of like the the um, two wrongs don't make a right. You can't combat hate with hate. No, never. Nothing, nothing good will come out of it. So if you combat hate with love, and empathy, and understanding, an example, an example, an exactly. example. It's, it's. But here, it, also too, peep, this is what I wanted to say. You need to understand that when somebody is being hateful, they legitimately, at the core of their being, do not understand their value. Okay, they do not understand their value whatsoever. Okay, and the fact is that they only have so many of these. They only have so many breaths until we are done, right? I only have so many breaths until I'm finished. And they chose to spend one or two or multiple of those breaths or multiple minutes of those breaths hating on someone else. That is someone who doesn't understand their value. And so literally when I see that, I go, oh, man, I wonder what happened to them. I wonder what happened to them that made them buy into the fact that they were not valued and they judge everybody else against the same measure they judge themselves now. And that is the saddest thing I think I have ever said. And so when you understand that, you can look at it and go, "Mm, man, that sucks. I hope they either stick around, they get something positive. I hope some love from somebody close to them shreds that and lets them know how valuable they are. I hope they get involved in some type of personal growth. And that's why we do this podcast. Look here, I, I, I've talked to Tyler about this. I'm not going to do something that I do not feel is worthy of my life, okay? I'm not going to sit here and take these breaths that bring me that much closer to my grave if it's not valuable, if it's not something that, that people I don't even know, people that I may know, or my own children could watch and go, man, that was my dad. That, I got this from him. Or, or, or man, I... I had no idea that that's how I was living my life. And I watched this stupid Sales Wolves podcast. I'm not even a salesperson. And I, and I saw this handsome bearded guy and this ugly balded <laughs> guy that looks like he's going through chemo. And, and I thought I'd figure I'd stop and listen for a second. And, and if I can touch that person and that person can, can change their value level of themselves, thereby changing the way that they see their outside world, man, this was worth spending this breath on. So to, to wrap things up, I think uh, one, one of the most powerful lessons that I've learned uh, from Gary Vee and one of the stories that, that he tells, uh, and this is really going out not to the person that's worried about quote unquote haters, but maybe to the person that has, has hated on other people themselves. There's two ways to build the tallest building in town. The majority will go at it by tearing the other buildings down. The few, the 1% will do it by building the tallest building in town. And so do not waste your time. Do not waste your energy trying to tear other people down in order for you to look bigger. Focus all of your energy, all of your effort on just becoming bigger. And if you do that, Long term, you always win. You always win. You always win. So, guys, with that, this is episode 108 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh